Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Freezing Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. My goodness, it is cold this week. And I am super excited to share and to bring a little bit of springtime color and flowers into your life today with the In Bloom Bundle by Stampin' Up! Now, this bundle is one that I kind of sort of glossed over when I was first looking through the catalog because I have so many flower stamp sets and die sets. And I kind of thought, oh, I don't need more flowers, right? Who can relate? Can anybody relate? <laughs> well, I was so wrong because these dies are so unique and you're gonna see why in a few minutes when I show you. Now I'm just gonna wait a couple of seconds for people to join. I see Violet's joined, who else is here? Let's bring up the video on my iPad and see who else is joining today before we get too far into it. All right, who have we got? We've got Louise and we've got Violet and Helen and Lois, hi Gail. How are you? All right, we've got a good group here. So as I was saying, um, this, oh, Helen. Is it Helen or Elaine? You need to correct me because I don't want to say the wrong name all the time. I don't even want to know how cold it is in Wawa. I, you guys are far hardier than I am. I could not live there. <laughs> Way too cold. Um, hello, Regis. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about this In Bloom bundle. Now, again, we all have a ton of flower stamp sets, right? And we probably all have a ton of flower dies, but this die set is so unique. And I'm going to show you why in a, in a minute, but, um, it was one that I had kind of bypassed. And then I started to see some people doing projects with them. And I kind of thought, Oh, maybe I do need it after all. And I think today, after you see some of the gorgeousness that, um, this die set produces, you may th be thinking the same way. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to flip the camera. Um, just look away for a second and then I'll let you know when I'm all set to go because I don't want anybody to get seasick. All right, so give me a minute. Let's make sure we're set here. All right. We are looking pretty good. Just make sure my lights are there. I think we're good. All right. You can look once again. And uh, this is the In Bloom Bundle. Now, as I said, oops, <laughs> straight dimensional backing. Like that never happens. Um, so this is the stamp set. Again, it's one that is kind of similar to a lot of stamp sets that we have. Um, it's got lots of awesome, bold floral images. I love the fonts and the sentiment, but for me, what is the must have in this bundle is the dies. Now, first of all, this is a huge set of dies. It includes a ton of different flowers, um, centers for the flowers, leaves, branches, stems. It also includes this um, cute little die cut double bow. So for those of you that are not fans of, of tying bows and ribbon, there you go. Just cut one out of paper. And then it also includes this um, beautiful label shape. So again, lovely flowers but it is the stitching or pierced detail on these dies that is just such a wow so i'm going to show you the projects we're going to make and you're going to see what i what i'm talking about all right so let me bring in the first project i posted this one yesterday um this is just a, a basic card i just used the curvy dies to create a curved edge on it um to allow some of that um, beautiful black and white dsp to show through but i'm going to move this up to the camera a little bit closer and show you the beautiful now i don't know how well that's going to show because my lights are too low can you see those the, the stitching on the stitching detail on those flowers it's just so so pretty there we go that's showing a little bit better um it's just stunning and honestly these dies they're all you need right these dies and a sentiment and you're good to go so we're going to make this card first i'm going to show you how easy it is i've already done all of the die cutting ahead of time so this is going to come together really quickly um the cool thing about these dies is that all of them will fit in the mini machine. So if you have uh, the mini cut and emboss machine, all of these dies will work in your mini machine, which is pretty awesome. All right, so to start, I have a thick basic white card base. So this started out just as a standard card base. It was five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And then I just ran it through my machine with the curvy dies and took off, well, let's fold it in half and you can see how much I took off. 
crisp that up with my bone folder. It's about, well, at its widest, it's about an inch and a quarter, okay? Um, and you can play around with how much you take off, depending on how much of the DSP you want to show in behind, right? So this DSP is going to get glued inside my card. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> my curve is a little too deep on here, but that's okay. We can hide it with some flowers. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change up our design a little bit. All right, so first of all, this strip of DSP is one and a quarter inches. If I'd cut it to one and a half, I would have been good, but that's okay. We're gonna change it. This is how we fix mistakes. <laughs> mistakes happen to all of us, right? Or maybe I'm the only one that makes mistakes. <laughs> Please tell me you make mistakes too. All right. Oh, I got Julie here and Sue and Betsy. The whole Wawa crew is here. Awesome. I hope you girls are keeping warm up there. Woo, minus 31. Yuck. All right. So this piece, as I said, was five and a half by one and a quarter. Yes, one and a quarter. If I cut it to one and a half, as I said, I wouldn't have that little gap there, but that's okay. We are going to fix it. All right. So before I do anything else, I'm going to stamp. Actually, you know what? Nope. I'm going to flip my, I'm going to stamp my sentiment over here. So we're going to stamp our sentiment. This is happy birthday. You really are the best. And we are going to stamp in the memento black ink. So I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to flip this card. Okay. I'm going to sort of do a, a mirror image of this card. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment right about here. Okay relatively straight. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to stamp some flowers on the card base. So I'm going to bring in some of the floral imagery from the stamp set and my color palette today. I love these colors. Could these be any summerier? Uh, Magenta Madness, Gorgeous Grape, Just Jade, and Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to start with my Daffodil Delight and the largest um, blossom that I have here. So we're going to ink that up and we're just going to stamp a couple of these guys on our card front. Easy peasy. And then we're going to bring in the next largest and a little bit of Magenta Madness. And we're going to add a couple of these. Now some of these are going to get covered, but I don't really know how many are going to get covered until I position my flower. So I'm just going to stamp a bunch. If they, some of them end up covered, that's okay. Okay. So there's my magenta and then we're going to bring in our gorgeous grape and our little bitty flower. And we'll add a couple of these guys. We'll put one up here and we'll put a couple down here. Now lots of these are going to get covered, but that's okay. Okay. Aren't these colors just happy? They're happy, happy, happy. Oh, Sue, thanks for keeping Deb on her toes. Wouldn't want her to miss. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to bring in my Just Jade. And this is actually a cent the center of the flowers, but I thought they kind of looked fun just as little designs. So I'm just going to stamp a few of these little guys randomly here and there. We'll add this guy here. And we'll maybe do one more down here. That's probably going to get covered, but that's okay. And then I'm going to come in with this little bitty one. So this is a smaller flower center and my black ink. And I'm just going to add some centers to my, whoopsie, put some more ink on there. The centers of my yellow flowers here. And oh, what the heck, we'll add some to our pink ones too. Why not? Just adds a little something to the center of those flowers. Okay. And isn't that pretty just as it is? Like you could totally leave it just like that and it's a really cute card, but we're gonna add some die cuts because they are the wow in this bundle. All right, so before we do our flowers, we're gonna add a little bit of twine. Now this is one of the rare moments, rare occasions that I am actually going to wrap my twine around my card front and adhere it. I wanted to keep this as minimal as it was. I was almost gonna do simple stamping. So simple stamping meaning no die cuts, no anything but then I couldn't bring myself to do it because I love the dyes so much. So I'm just using a little bit of the pay Playful Pets uh, Baker's Twine. And I love the black and white and the way the black and white twine coordinates with the striped uh, black and white DSP. So we're gonna just wrap that around and tie ourselves a bow. Okay, oop, that didn't go very well. Didn't keep the tension on that one. Let's try that again. 
See, I'm not a practice for this because I do this so rarely. Usually I do my little twine saving trick, but we don't have a layer to hide the ends behind. So we have to actually tie the bow and wrap the twine. We're gonna slide this over just a smidge, right about there. And then I'm gonna put a glue dot right here just so it doesn't slip and slide around. So I'm just gonna hold that knot in place with a glue dot, just like that. Okay, and that'll just secure it so that it doesn't slide around on my card. Okay, whoops, I should have made that loop a little smaller before I glued it. There we go. We'll trim off our tails. All right, now we're ready to play with these beautiful die cuts. Now, if I could just get this just lay flat, we're just going to give that a good burnish. And here I have lots of these beautiful die cuts. They're so, so pretty. So we have um, this largest flower. I'm going to use this little bitty flower as a center on it. So we're going to just add a glue dot here and pop that onto there like that. And then I've got a little yellow flower center and the detail on these, like every single piece has that stitching or pierced detail. It's just so, they're so fantastic. I love these ties. I don't think they will ever leave my studio. And I don't say that very often because I got to say I tend to get rid of my retired product. Okay, so if we put our big yellow one here and we maybe tuck our purple guy here and our pink guy here. And then this is just floral arranging, right? We've got our little sprig. So let's put that the longer leaf one on first. So we'll just add a glue dot here and we're just going to add it to the back of our yellow flower. So that's gonna go on kind of like that. Okay, and now we wanna hide this gap, right? So we're gonna do that with flowers. <laughs> lots and lots of flowers. I think we're gonna tuck this purple one in behind because I kind of want my yellow one to be front and center. So we're gonna add a couple of glue dots to our purple and just kind of tuck this. How do we want that? Let's do it like that okay and then we have this guy which is gonna tuck in here and I think that one we're actually gonna glue flat so let's take a little bit of Tombow we're designing on the fly here you guys because this is not the way my original was <laughs> laid out so we're just gonna wing it because we can and it's live video and why not right <laughs> all right we need to add some more leaves so we're gonna tuck a leaf in, do I want that on there? No, I don't. I'm gonna tuck a leaf in here, I think. Do I want it there? Nope, I want it here. That's where I want it. All right, so let's add a leaf down here. Just like that, yep, that works. And then we'll tuck another one in here. So the cool thing about these dies is there are so many of them. You basically, what I did when I was designing, I just basically took all of the flower dies, put them all on a single color of cardstock, ran it through, cut a whole whack of flowers, changed the cardstock color, did it again. So I ended up with dozens of beautiful colored flowers that I then could use on my card designs, which is awesome. I love it when I can mass produce die cuts like that and then just have them to play with. It's great. All right, we'll add this guy. And then we've got these little bitty sort of two leafed branches. So we'll add one of them down here. Yep, that's looking good. And then we've got this little purple guy who I think is gonna tuck in right there. So we'll add a glue dot there. Now I'm just tacking these into place right now. We're actually gonna put these all on with dimensionals in a minute. Okay, and then let's add another little leaf over here. We'll tuck this guy in here. Uh, let's tuck it in like that. Actually, I don't like that. Where's my scissor? Let's just turn this guy off for a minute. And we're gonna actually put him at a different angle. So we're gonna tuck him in like that. So it's a little bit closer. I like that better. Okay. And then this last leaf, do I even need it? I don't think I do. 
All right, so now we are gonna add some dimensionals, but it's important to take note of the fact that this card needs to open, right? <laughs> so I cannot put dimensionals on these little guys that extend onto the, the DSP piece, right? So my dimensionals need to go towards the top. So we just wanna be careful that when we are adding our dimensionals, we don't go crazy and glue our card shut. Okay, so that should be good. We'll add a couple of minis on these leaves to make sure they stay put. And we'll do one more up here because this little guy tends to get caught. So we'll peel these backings off and pop this on here. Oh, thank you, Laura. You like my flower arranging? I love playing with... Oh, look at that. I almost glued my card shut. That was almost an emergency. All right. So that is going to go on just like that. Isn't that pretty? So, so easy. And I hid my mistake. You see that? So there we go. Mirror image birthday cards. How easy is that? These die cuts are really the bomb, I got to tell you. Now, let me grab a couple of little embellishments. So these are the matte black dots. And I'm going to use some of the smaller ones just to add just a little bit of something onto my card here. We'll just add one down here as well. There we go. Just a little bit of something, something to, to jazz up our design. All right, so super simple. Like, it's all about the die cuts on this one, right? All right, so that is number one done. So, so easy. So let's get some of this mess out of the way. And some of these inks I need to keep. So let's just think about which ones we need. I think I just need those. All right, card number two. Let's get this out of the way. Card number two is this one. So we were going for bright and bold on the last one. This one is all soft and pretty springtime colors. Um, so here I used, uh, well, it was all about the subtles, right? So again, so, so pretty, so simple, um, but it's all about the die cut. So let me show you what I did. Now, this is a little tip I wanted to share with you for uh, blending color, but starting from a colored base, okay? So usually when I blend color, I start from a white base, right? Um, but for this one, I actually started with a soft seafoam base. Can you see the difference there? Okay, so this started out as this. So I'm gonna use my blending brush to add some color. Now, before I do that, I'm going to do some repeated stamping. So I'm using soft seafoam ink on soft seafoam cardstock. Okay, so I'm doing tone on tone. And I'm gonna take my You Are Amazing and just stamp it several times, just to kind of create um, an anchor for my focal image. Okay, so sometimes you can just use stamped images and even sentiments, it doesn't always have to be, you know, a stamped shape. Um, sentiments are a great way to create sort of a, a background that will ground your design. Okay, so that's it. Super simple. All right, then I'm going to come in with my pear pizzazz ink and my blending brush. And I'm going to ink up my brush and we're going to come on to our soft seafoam cardstock. And I'll just start in this one corner so you can see how it builds up. Okay, so can you see how that corner is starting to get a bit of an ombre effect where it's darker in the corner and it, it gets lighter on the area where I haven't added ink. So this is a little sort of cheat way to get an ombre background um, with a little bit less effort involved. Okay, so if you start with colored cardstock and then add your darker shades, you wanna start with a light color, obviously, um, and then add your darker shades to build up your, your color, it's a great way to get that ombre effect without having to do quite as much work, okay? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more down in these corners. What I love about these blending brushes is you can do your stamping and add your blended ink over top and it won't blur your stamped images. Um, when you are sponging with daubers, 
if I were trying to do this with daubers, my stamped sentiments would get smudged a little bit. They would blur because I'm putting so much um, pressure on my dauber that the ink, the moisture from the ink on the dauber would blur the stamp sentiment. Okay, so the cool thing about these blending brushes is that I don't have to worry about that. It doesn't blur the way um, it does with daubers. But isn't that a cool way to get an ombre effect with only one shade of ink by starting with some colored cardstock? Okay, super pretty, super easy, done and done. All right, oh, Michelle, I love my brushes too. They are my faves. I actually just ordered more because they came back in stock. And um, yeah, I will probably have a dozen before too long. All right, so that is it for my background. We're going to add a mat behind it so that it pops a little bit against um, our card base. So I forgot to mention, this is just four by five and a quarter inches. Okay, soft seafoam cardstock. This is um, basic white that's cut to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, so when I layer that, I get my nice narrow little border all the way around. So actually, before we do that, we better add our twine. Let's do that first. So I have here some snail mail baker's twine. I am officially addicted to this. I think I admitted to that last week. <laughs> I love this stuff. Um, so we are gonna add um, a little bit of each color. So some of the pink, or sorry, Blushing Bride. We don't say pink, Stampin' Up Land. We say Blushing Bride. Uh, Blushing Bride and Whisper White, or Basic White, or just plain white as the case may be now. And I'm going to add a glue dot on the back of my panel and just wrap my twine around. So this is where, this is my twine saving trick that I normally do that I couldn't do on the last card because I didn't have a layer to hide, hide the ends behind. Okay, so there's my twine. Now I'm ready to go ahead and glue that onto my mat. So we'll just add a bit of seal and pop, come here you, there we go. And pop that on there, just like that. Okay, super cute. Jill Peterson, I have to tell you, first of all, I have to thank you for my Christmas card. Yes, I'm not kidding. Your Christmas card arrived today. <laughs> That's got to be a record. It was mailed December 23rd, or it was postmarked December 23rd. I don't even know when you, when you mailed it, but December 23rd is a postmark, and it arrived today, February 9th. <laughs> Talk about snail mail, people. All right. So my card base for this one, we're gonna go ahead and mount that onto our card base. It is purple posy cardstock, four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. And we are going to just fold that in half along the score line. I know I, I actually laughed out loud as well, so I couldn't believe it. I thought, wow, <laughs> that's gotta be a record of some kind. I don't know. Has anybody ever had mail take longer than that <laughs> to arrive? All right, so we're gonna pop this onto our card base and hopefully get it straight. I'm laughing right now. It's hard to, to do things straight when you're laughing. All right, so there's my card base. We're going to stamp our sentiment. Now this is that cute, cute label that's included in the die set. So it's a cute shape. It's got the stitching around the edges and it's a nice size. It holds most of the sentiments from the stamp set. Now I have to find my stamp, there it is. And we are gonna stamp this in some smoky slate cardstock. You're still missing two from our swap, Louise. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. At least Jill's excuse is that it was coming from the U.S., right? <laughs> like, or I guess that that's the excuse there. It came from the U.S., so it's not, you know, going across that border can be a challenge. But I, for our swap, I can't believe that you still haven't received everything. That's crazy. All right, so there is my You Are Amazing. So now we are going to take some of these pretty flowers, die cut and subtle. So I've used petal pink. Uh, purple posy and soft sea foam and by sponging that background I get some contrast right you wouldn't know that um, the background is the same shade as my leaves all right so we're going to add let's just add a little bit of adhesive to the corner of our label here and we'll pop that guy on there and what else do we have let's add our stem our stem's gonna kind of pop on now. I have to make sure that this is not gonna extend off the edge of my card so we can get it into our envelope. So we'll add 
this guy right about there. And then we'll tuck one of these little guys in. So again, you guys are get to watch me arrange flowers today. That's what today's all about. <laughs> and then this guy's gonna come down here in the corner. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive there. And we'll pop that one on there like that. So pretty. And then we have our purple posy one that's gonna go in the opposite corner. So we'll just add that one there. Now am I missing? I must, get, I must have not cut as many flowers this time. That's okay. We'll tuck this guy in here. I'm missing my blushing bride flowers. That's what happened. They probably got left over on my other table, but that's all right. So we're gonna just tuck this guy in. Let's tuck him in kind of like that. Nope, I wanna see more of them. Let's turn them this way. There we go. And then we've got another little set of leaves. We'll add this guy here. And we'll add one of these guys. I think we'll put that one there. So we'll tuck that one in there like that. And then we'll do one of these guys right here. That's looking good, you guys. I really like that. We just need a little something up here. I think we're gonna add a little extra there just to account for the fact that I'm missing some flowers here. So this is gonna be a bit leafier than my sample. So this is gonna go on right centered on my card, but of course we're gonna pop it up because well, everything's better popped, right? So let's just add a couple of dimensionals here. Whoopsie. I've got a two for one deal there. And I'll just do a couple of minis on some of the leaves just to make sure that they stay flat. There we go. We'll get rid of all our backings. I love arranging um, flowers behind a label this way. Um, I know some people would prefer to arrange them on the card front, but I just find that if I do it arrange like start with the label as my um, starting point and then arrange my flowers behind it um, I find I get them just laid out better I think I just feel it looks better all right so my bow is gonna go on this one I think on this side so I'm gonna actually slide this over just a touch so I have room for my bow there we go and then we're gonna tie a cute little twine bow so I'm going to take both my Blushing Bride and my white, we'll double it up and then we're going to make our loop, bring the tail around and through to make our cute little bow. And then we'll just adjust our loops until we get something that we like and trim it off. And then this time we're going to tuck it on this side because it's going to fit better this time. I'm just changing all my designs on the fly. I hope you guys are okay with that. <laughs> all right, so we'll pop this one on here like that. Okay, so, so cute. And then we need some bling because, I don't know, spring to me is about weddings and pearls and bling. So we're going to add a few of these little, what are these? These are the elegant faceted something. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Somebody can help me. Louise, you can help me. I know you can. Elegant faceted dots, I want to say. Elegant faceted gems. Elegant faceted something. But there you go. So, so cute. Now I'll show you on the inside of this one, I stamped some flowers in the same ink colors that I used um, cardstock. So that gives you, it ties the, the front into the inside. All right. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. And we're going to go on to number three. Now, number three is an easy peasy fun fold. So I wanted to share this one with you guys because... Um, it is celebration, and I don't know about you, but I have a ton, and I mean a ton, of celebration DSP. So I wanted to share this cute fun fold with you that really maximizes your DSP. Oh, thanks, Martine. <laughs> no, those aren't the opals, Louise. These are ones are from the um, annual catalog. I think they're elegant faceted dots. I think that's what they're called. Um, so this fun fold um, is super simple. So it's got a belly band that slides off and then it's an accordion fold that opens out like this. 
Okay, now you could do all kinds of cool things here. You could um, make this into a pocket for a gift card if you wanted to and actually attach it to a card base. This is just a single piece of cardstock. It doesn't open. Um, so the intent here is that you would write your message on this part. But if you wanted to and you needed a gift card holder, you could easily make this a pocket, right, to store a gift card and then make this a card that opens and you could write your greeting on the inside or you could even add a, a piece of whisper white to the back and write your greeting on the back. So lots of possibilities with this fun fold. You do need to have a belly band to hold it shut because you'll see, see how it pops up? So the belly band kind of slides on and holds everything flat so it fits in the envelope. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. It is, like I said, a really easy fun fold and I'm all about easy fun folds that don't have, you know, fancy cutting or measuring. All right, so I've got to get my measurements out here so I make sure I tell you the right thing. I don't want to give you the wrong information. So my background, my base, is just a, a quarter sheet of cardstock. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, I've used Knight of Navy. So that's my base. My accordion fold out piece is four and a quarter by 11 inches. Okay, so it's essentially like a card base, right? A standard card base, the same size. Okay, um, then with the um, long side in your trimmer, you are going to score at, turn it this way, three inches, five and a half, eight and nine and a half. Now I'll put all these measurements up in the description afterwards. Okay. So don't worry if you miss them. Um, but so it's one, two, three, four score lines. That's it. Okay. So then starting from the narrowest point, we are going to do a, a series of mountain and valley folds. So the first one is going to be a mountain. So it's going to tuck under, then we're going to do a valley, then a mountain, then a valley. Okay. So basically it's just an accordion or a fan fold. Okay, so mountain, valley, mountain, valley. Super simple, all right? But that's the way it's going to close, okay? All right, so now we're gonna decorate. And I decided to pull out some of the Paper Blooms DSP. So this is Celebration Freebie. And it is designed to coordinate with this bundle. How convenient of Stampin' Up! to do that for us. So you can get the buy the bundle and get the DSP that coordinates for free. Gotta love it. So here I have a piece of the DSP. It is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And it is going to go on my background panel. So this is the four and a quarter by five and a half panel. It's just gonna get centered on there like that. So we're gonna add a little adhesive and pop that on here, just like that. Okay, then we're going to bring in our accordion piece. So lots of different patterns of DSP and I actually pulled in a little bit of the ombre DSP as well because it coordinates. So we have, I'm going to work from sort of front smallest to widest. So these are two strips. Let me just see if I can get these turned the right way. How did I do this? That's the way it goes. So these are two strips. These are both the same size panel. These two little sections here, they're going to go on like this. Okay. So I actually cut them uh, right side by side. So it looks like sort of one piece has been cut because it is. <laughs> These are one and a quarter by four inches, okay? Each of these little panels. So they are gonna go on there like that. So we'll just grab a little bit of liquid glue and we'll pop these on. Super easy. There we go, okay? And then this one as well, same dimensions, one and a quarter by four. Is that right? Yeah, one and a quarter by four. I wanna make sure I'm not telling you guys the wrong stuff, wrong information, that would be bad. All right, so there's that, okay? Now, on my sample here, I did a piece of the, a different pattern from the uh, Paper Blooms DSP and then some of the ombre DSP that I embossed using the ornate uh, floral embossing folder. But I decided I wanted to kind of keep the same thing going that I had here. So I took, again, another piece that I cut and these are two and a quarter by four. So they're gonna go on like that. Okay, so we kind of have almost like a, it's almost like a screen effect, you know, like those um, decor screens, folding screens that you can get for your, your home privacy screens, I guess they call them. Um, so I kind of wanted that sort of look. Now I could even if I really wanted to use this same pattern all the way across and get a really cool effect. Lots of possibilities for switching this design up. 
So again, both of these are the same size and it would be good if that was straight because right now it's not. And we'll see if I can wiggle that so it's a little bit straighter. There we go, that one's better. This one is not so straight. Okay, so there we go, easy peasy. And then finally, we have um, some white. So this is gonna be for the inside. This is where we're gonna stamp and write our greeting, okay? So this piece is two and a quarter by four. All right, it's gonna go in here like this. And then I have a little one half inch by four inch piece of Oso Ombre DSP, just to add a little accent. And the reason I did that is because that piece is shown, we see that when we close the accordion, okay? And I actually didn't want more pattern there, I wanted something solid to kind of ground these two patterns, okay? That was my thinking anyway. So before we glue that in, we're gonna stamp. So I need my You Are Amazing sentiment and my Knight of Navy ink. So we're gonna ink this up and we're going to stamp it centered on this little white strip here. And hopefully it's relatively straight, not too bad. And then we're gonna add just a couple of little flowers. So I've got this little bitty blossom and some Rococo Rose ink. And when I, again, when I designed this the first time, I stamped one full strength and one stamped off. And I kind of wish I had done both stamped off. So this time we're gonna do that. So we're gonna do a stamped off one there and a stamped off one there, okay? And then we're gonna bring back our navy ink again and a little center for the flowers. And again, we're gonna ink, stamp off, and just add a little bit of color to the center of our flowers. Super simple. All right, so now we're ready to glue these inside our accordion. So this is gonna go here, this is going to go here. So I'm gonna glue my white piece on first. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna glue my ombre piece on first because that's the one that's going to be visible on the front of the card. <laughs> so it would be good if we had that one straight. So we'll just add a little bit of liquid glue. And that is gonna go on here. So I'm gonna be looking, I wanna have an equal border along the top and the two sides, okay? And then I'm gonna add my white panel, but right up against it, okay? It's gonna glue in like that. So I'll just add a little bit more glue. <laughs> oh, Kelly, it is a beautiful bundle, honestly. Um, it's, like, I, I was very pleasantly surprised because I kind of thought, oh, more flowers, but this one is, it's unique. It's different from anything we, we carry. So so I just wanna give that a little bit of a burnish, make sure that's in place and that's it. Now that's a cute little card all by itself, right? But we're gonna glue that onto our base. Okay, so it's gonna get centered on our base panel. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive here and we're gonna center this. So again, you kinda wanna watch, and this is gonna be a challenge cause I am not looking straight down on this, but we're gonna hope that this is somewhat centered and relatively straight. <laughs> there we go, all right. Now again, we need our belly band to hold this shut, right? Because it wants to pop out. So let's do our belly band. So our belly band is one and a half by nine and a half inches, okay? So I did the same color as Knight of Navy cardstock for my, as my base, okay? So I'm just going to lay my card with it shut on my belly band piece here, just kind of in the middle-ish. All right, I'm not really worrying about getting it perfectly centered, but I'm going to just kind of hug my card with my belly band. So I'm gonna bring it around, and I don't wanna make this too tight because I need to be able to slide it on and off easily, right? If you pull this too tight, um, you're gonna have a problem getting it on and off, all right? So once you kind of have it where you want it, take this off and then burnish these folds so they get them nice and crisp. All right, so then we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive just to the ends and just fold that over. We just wanna make sure that my edges line up so it's nice and straight, okay? Then I'm gonna flip it over and we're not even gonna see that because that's gonna be on the back side. okay? All right, so now I have another strip of DSP. This is the same um, pattern that I used on the background. Uh, this piece is one and a quarter by four and it's gonna pop onto there just centered on my belly band. So we'll just add a little bit of glue here and we're gonna pop that on right 
about there. Okay. And then again, we're going to do a little bit of floral arranging. So we're going to start with our label. So same label I used on the last card. And we're going to bring in our congrats. You're so fancy. I love that sentiment. And I think it's perfect to use on a fancy fold card, right? So we're going to ink that up. And oops, make sure we're fully inked. There we go. And just stamp that. Hopefully this is straight. It is not right now. There we go. Stamp that on the center of our label. And then I have a whole bunch of the blooms. Now, these are actually cut from the large polka dot pattern um, in the DSP pack. So it's got that, um, the herringbone pattern on the back and those large polka dots. So I used that pattern to cut all of these flowers. You'll see that this petal actually extended off the edge of the, the circle, but that's okay because I'm gonna hide it. Um, but what I love about that is we get that sort of soft watercolor variegated look um, that totally works with the DSP. All right, so we are going to add some adhesive to the back of our label and we'll add our flower here. And then we'll do, oh, my roll of glue dots is looking a bit of a mess right now. That doesn't usually happen. I'm usually pretty good about keeping my glue dots under control. So we'll add one leaf there. Oh, there's an extra, that's what the problem is. I missed one on my roll. We'll add this guy down here. And then we're gonna add this one. There's so many different um, flower shapes in this. I just love the variety um, in this die set. It's just awesome. So we're gonna hide our petals that have the white. So they're gonna get tucked in behind our label there. So no one will ever know and you won't tell them, right? So we're gonna add a glue dot here. Thanks, Martine. I'm glad you like it. I like, honestly, these dies, <laughs> I, these will probably replace every other set of floral dies that I have because they are, they're just so, so pretty. Um, and they work for so many different occasions, especially we have so many stitched dies right now. Like stitching is kind of the thing. It's the trend right now. And so when you add this to your sort of collection, um, it just sort of rounds out the collection. So we'll add some of these little bitty blue guys. And we'll add this one down here. Honestly, I could sit and play with these little flowers all day. It's just so much fun. <laughs> it's just, you don't have to be a florist or, you know, have, a degree, have any experience in floral arranging with these dies. You just kind of play around with them. Now I've got some that are cut out of the darker blue. This is the old olive. So we're going to add one there and one more here just down here like that okay isn't that pretty oh love it and then I have one more little blue flower that we're gonna put on the front of the label on the opposite corner so we'll tuck this little guy in there and there we go so so pretty all right now before we put this on our belly band we're gonna add a bit of ribbon so this is the flowers for every season ribbon uh combo pack so i'm just gonna take and lay a little bit of seal down across the front of my belly band and we're just going to put this on and just wrap it around okay and trim it off the roll okay that little bit's gonna get hidden so don't don't you worry. And then that is going to pop on like that, but we're gonna pop it up because we can and we should. So I wanna make sure that my dimensionals are only on my belly band, right? So I'm actually gonna put them directly on the belly band rather than on my label. Whoops, this is the one that I need, okay? Cause I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna have them extending off the edges. So we're just gonna add a couple more, one here, one here make sure those are covered yep we're good and then we're gonna add a couple more up here one there and one there yes I know it's a lot of dimensionals but you know <laughs> there is nothing wrong with making sure things stay put right right <laughs> all right so we're gonna pop that on just like that centered on our belly bands Okay, 
And then that is going to slide onto our card. So we'll just tuck that in like that. Come on. In you go. There we go. And we're going to add a bow because we can and because bows are pretty. So using that same ribbon, we are going to tie a pretty little bow. So I'm going to pinch my ribbon between my thumb and index finger, making two little bunny ears, two loops. Okay. Um, I'm taking my left loop, crossing it over the right, bringing it around and through and pulling. All right. And then you've got to make your loops smaller. So pull them really teeny tiny. This is quite wide ribbon. So you're going to pull them small and then pull tight and then make them small again and pull tight until you have a nice tight knot. Okay. So this ribbon takes a little bit of effort. It's kind of a linen texture. So it takes a little bit of effort to get a nice tight knot. And then I'm going to take and trim the tails of my bow into a notch because whenever I have wider ribbon, I just like the look of that. I think it's kind of pretty. All right. So there's my cute little bow and it is going to get added onto my belly band just like that. Find the end of my glue dots here. So we're going to pop that on. I just want to take care not to cover up my sentiment, right? So there we go. Done and done. So cute. Such a mess here. <laughs> Let me clean up a bit of my gong show here. I forgot to give myself a trash bin again. So I've got stuff everywhere. There we go. We're sort of under control. <laughs> all right, let's put this guy back together and I'll bring them all back for you. So there's one fun fold, two and three. There we go. All right, you guys, if you have not already checked out this bundle in the catalog, you need to do it and you want to get it before the end of celebration so you can pick up the DSP as your freebie. Okay, it is an awesome bundle. Um, stay tuned for more projects with this one this week and I might, no promises, but I might even jump on live on Friday for some simple stamping with this set because there's lots of fun ideas for that one too. Okay, all right, everybody, have a great week. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.